protesters swarmed a California hotel where Donald Trump was about to speak. The Republican U.S. presidential candidate was forced to ditch his motorcade and walk to the event. All this before a key primary in Indiana on Tuesday. ABC's Devin Dwyer reports. Thousands of liberal activists blocked Donald Trump from a grand entrance at this hotel Friday. Crowds swarming past barricades, clashing with police, this Trump lookalike even scuffling with protesters outside where California Republicans were holding their convention. The mayhem forcing Trump to take a detour, bailing on his motorcade to hike through the grass with his Secret Service detail to a back entrance just to get inside. That was not the easiest entrance I've ever made. We went under a fence and through a fence, and oh boy, I felt like I was crossing the border, actually. You know, it's true. I was crossing the border. The clash in California comes as Trump zeroes in on Indiana. 57 delegates up for grabs Tuesday. This coming week, we break the all time record. And we'll break the all time record by probably 4 million votes. I mean, it's, nobody's ever seen anything like this. It's a movement. But Ted Cruz says Hoosiers are at the center of a crossroads. A choice between one campaign that is based on yelling and screaming and cursing and insults and another campaign that is a positive, optimistic, forward looking, conservative campaign. To stop Trump, Cruz is banking on an all-star team, including Indiana's governor, Mike Pence. I'm not against anybody, but I will be voting for Ted Cruz. Some Cruz allies are taking personal shots. Conservative talk host Glenn Beck, who stumps for Cruz, mocked Trump's appearance by smearing crushed Cheetos on his face. Do I look like Donald Trump? Well, big primary wins this week in the U.S. have brought Democrat Hillary Clinton and Republican Donald Trump a step closer to becoming the respective party's presidential nominees, while Hillary Clinton brushed away Trump's claim that her popularity is based mostly on her simply being a woman. Trump was trying to sell himself to Republican Party stalwarts in California. You saw in that last report where more than 170 delegates are up for grabs in June's primary there. Stefan Schmidt, popularly known to millions as Dr. Politics, is a political science professor at Iowa State University. He joins us this morning from Ames, Iowa. Professor Schmidt, good to see you. How well do you think Donald Trump did Friday convincing the California Republican Party brass that he's worth supporting? Well, I think that, uh, you know, obviously he had a little bit of a problem getting there in the first place. But, uh, you know, demonstrations usually are a part of politics, uh, in this country at least. Uh, at least there wasn't a lot of violence. Um, and Trump looks good in the polls. California has a strange system uh, where you have to win in the congressional districts, and it has a lot of congressional districts. And so we're going to have to see if Ted Cruz's organization in trying to appeal to delegates in all of those uh, congressional districts uh, works better than Trump's sort of mass media appeal and uh, you know, his outrageous and, and, and intensive campaigning, but uh, he, he should do okay. Overall, how do you see Ted Cruz and John Kasich doing? Well, Kasich is uh, hoping and praying that Donald Trump doesn't get the nomination because obviously his only hope is either that someone will pick him as vice president, and obviously Cruz will not do that because Cruz has already picked someone. Uh, Donald Trump is not very likely to pick him, so he is not doing well. And really, honestly, Ted Cruz has had a very, very bad run here in the last few weeks. He lost all of the uh, primaries uh, in the Acela Corridor on the, on the East Coast. Um, and he does appeal to a certain narrow niche of the Republican Party. Um, but, uh, you know, it is a, a two-man contest between Cruz and Donald Trump. Uh, and Trump is getting bigger crowds and he's winning more, more races. And nonetheless, of course, uh, Mike Pence, Indiana's governor, yesterday said he'll vote for Senator Ted Cruz. How influential do you think the governor will be among regular voters in Indiana heading to the polls next week? Well, you know, endorsements often really don't work very well and, and, and don't uh, amount to much. Uh, basketball coaches uh, sometimes are a better endorsement, and Donald Trump got a huh. huge endorsement uh, from Bobby Knight there in, in uh, you know, in Indiana. And uh, Ted Cruz doesn't seem to know a lot about basketball. Uh, they said that uh, when he called a basketball a hoop a, a ring, mm. uh, they said, well, maybe that's what they call basketball hoops in Canada. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. poor Ted Cruz, uh, you know, sometimes he gets it right, but in those he didn't. 
I, I think uh, it's a tie. Bobby Knight versus the governor. In the remaining seconds that we have left, I want to talk about Hillary Clinton quickly. Uh, she's all but locked in the Democratic Party's nomination. Now, what's going to be important for her? Brad, Hillary Clinton was always supposed to be the candidate of the Democratic Party. What is most important is for her to begin to assuage uh, Bernie Sanders' passionate supporters and point out to them that it is hugely important that they support the candidate of the party. There are Supreme Court nominations and other things that are crucial to uh, liberalism and to the Democrats, and that's her mission right now. Well, Stefan Schmidt, political science professor at Iowa State University. Professor, thanks very much for this. Thanks, Brad.